fractions by finding the least common multiple of the denominators and then using that to make equivalent fractions. When we do this, we'll make all of our pieces the same size and easier to compare. Let's start out by comparing one third to one half. We can see on our fraction bars that one third is smaller than one half, but let's go ahead and find our least common multiple to make sure we're correct. Multiples of three include three, six, nine, 12, 15, and so on. Multiples of two include two, four, six, eight, 10, and so on. Six is the least common multiple of three and two, so we can work to change both of our fractions to one that has a denominator of six. To change one third to a fraction out of six, I need to multiply three times two. That means I also need to multiply my numerator times two. One times two gives me two, so one third is going to be equivalent to two sixths. For one half, two times three gives me six, so I also need to multiply my numerator by three. One times three gives me three. So now I have two sixths and three sixths. We can see that two pieces is smaller than three pieces, so going back to our original fractions, we were correct, and that one third is less than one half. We can also do the same thing for larger fractions. Here we have five sixths compared to three fourths. Looking on our fraction bars, we can see that five sixths and three fourths are very similarly sized. So making equivalent fractions will allow us to more accurately compare them. We need to find the least common multiple of six and four. Multiples of six include six, 12, 18, 24, and 30. Multiples of four include four, eight, 12, 16, and 20. 12 is our first least common multiple on that list, so we're gonna change both fractions to have a common denominator of 12. Let's start by changing five, six. To get from six to 12, I need to multiply by two, so that means I need to multiply my five by two as well. Five times two gives me 10, so five, six becomes 10 twelfths. For three fourths, I multiply four times three to give me 12, so that means I need to multiply three by three as well. Three times three gives me nine, so three fourths becomes nine twelfths. So now I'm comparing 10 twelfths to nine twelfths. Like we saw originally on our fraction bars, they're very close in value. But 10 pieces is slightly greater than nine pieces, so going back to our original fractions, five six is going to be greater than three fourths. Let's try one more example where we compare two fifths to four tenths. Looking at our fraction bars, we can see that they're pretty close in value, but let's go ahead and make our equivalent fractions to make sure. Finding our least common multiple of five and 10. Multiples of five include five, 10, 15, 20, and 25. Multiples of 10 include 10, 20, 30, 40, 50. 10 is the first thing on that list they have in common, so that's our least common multiple. So we need to start out by changing two fifths into a fraction out of 10. To get from five to 10, we multiply by two, so that means we need to multiply our numerator by two as well. Two times two gives me four, so two fifths becomes equivalent to four tenths. While our other fraction started out as four tenths, it already has a common denominator of 10, so we don't need to make an equivalent fraction. In fact, now our fractions are the same. So they aren't greater than or less than, instead we have equivalent fractions. Two fifths is equal to four tenths. Let's try another example on paper where we don't have manipulatives to refer back to. To do so, we need to make equivalent fractions using a common denominator of nine and 12, so we need to start out by finding the least common multiple of nine and 12. Multiples of nine include nine, 18, 27, 36, 45, and so on. Multiples of 12 include 12, 24, 36, 48, 60, and so on. At this point, we can see we have a common value on our list. The least common multiple of nine and 12 comes out to be 36. That means we'll make equivalent fractions using 36 as our common denominator. For 7 ninths, to get from 9 to 36, we multiplied by 4. Since we multiplied our denominator by 4, that means we need to multiply our numerator by 4 as well. 7 times 4 comes out to give me 28. For 8 twelfths, I multiply 12 times 3 to give me 36, so I need to multiply 8 times 3 as well. 8 times 3 gives me 24. So now I can compare 28 out of 36 to 24 four out of 36. 28 pieces is more than 24 pieces, so that tells me that 7 9 is going to be greater than 8 twelfths.